Wow, so Jennifer Blanc Bean and Michael Bean. Hello, guys. Hi. Happy Valentine's Day. Thank you, Thank you for all spending it with us. I know, I know. Day. We're spending it together. <laughs> Lovely. It's so romantic. So what was the romantic inspiration for uh, becoming the, the director that you are of the victim? Oh, well, um, you know, I just... Um, Cameron's always told me that I should be, uh, that I should direct. And uh, uh, when I was working for Robert Rodriguez, I kind of got this whole idea of this grindhouse stuff. And I, I didn't really know that you could make movies for really small budgets and or really never really paid attention to them. And then uh, uh, once I, I did Grindhouse, I realized there's a lot of really small movies out there with really small budgets. So I asked Jennifer, Jennifer if she could go out and find a little bit of money for us. And, uh, and uh, I told her I wanted to make an exploitation movie. And uh, <laughs> just a little grindhouse movie, and uh, she went out and uh, she she produced it, and uh, stars in it, and uh, I star in it also, and I wrote it and directed it, and uh, uh, we I'm did really like a, yeah we did a, a lot of fun. we did uh, uh, we did it in twelve days wow, wow. And, on the uh, red right I wrote it on on the red yeah, yeah. Uh, I wrote nice. it in about three weeks friends and family uh, so with writing <laughs> I, I was wondering about that with exploitation films do you start with the thing you're going to exploit and then work your way backwards to story or basically <laughs> I didn't have any money so we, uh -huh. I didn't have like special effects makeup uh -huh. I didn't have like a visual effects I didn't have like lots of people I didn't have lots of locations uh -huh. I had like nothing right <laughs> except for I looked at her and I thought you got okay. two attractive girls <laughs> and I said listen would you mind taking your clothes That's off you know that. for me and she said okay I'll, I'll take my clothes off as long as I get a percent, percentage of the profits you know? Valentine's Day <laughs> and Sweet. then uh, they get higher for the I said people. do you have any friends take their clothes. She said, well, maybe Daniel Harris will do it, you know, because Daniel's a good friend of ours. And yep. So Daniel said she would do it for us. And I said, okay, I've got two girls doing dirty things on film. That's good. What else can I do that's that cheap? And I thought, it, it just did. Like, uh, like dirty cops, yeah. uh, drugs, um, a little bit of violence, a little bit of torture. And then I thought, uh, fuck it, I'll just throw in a serial killer. And I just like, okay. it just, Threw it down there, man, and slapped it down there, and wrote it in three weeks, and uh, we rolled right into a 12-day shoot. And uh, he's a he's a great director. I mean, he's he's born to direct. He was directing while he was acting. All yeah, those I was years. wondering, how, yeah, how do you kind of direct yourself officially? I mean, was that a challenge for you, or was it something that you just kind of rolled right through? It's something that I just kind of rolled right yeah. through. I don't know. I mean, I don't even know how to explain yeah. it. It's just something that, uh, you know, basically that character that I play in the movie in this movie is really. And, and a lot of characters that I play uh, are really just me, mm -hmm. Michael Bean, kind of like, uh, what, would, what would I do in this situation? Now, you know, if I'm a Navy SEAL or if I'm a cop, I, I might do something differently because I'd had different training and so on mm -hmm. and so forth. So, but this is just a guy kind of living in the woods who'd, who'd been in some trouble. And uh, it's kind of like me. <laughs> Not the living in the woods part. <laughs> <laughs> the sex, just like him. Wow. The girl. So this is an autobiographical like film. Not a grindhouse <laughs> film. This was it. This was your big This is like a lifetime of life. 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 research to, 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 to the the the, all these vices. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a pretty good one for a lifetime. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I enjoyed what, myself. What did yeah. you learn like through the process? Like, What did you learn most about yourself as a director or what you might need to like change for the next time if you direct another film? Like, What do you need to work on? through that? Well, I don't even really <laughs> consider myself, um, I mean, this was like madness, the way that uh -huh. we shot this. I mean, we were doing about 40, like a vacuum, 45 setups a day, uh -huh. you know, and I was like, I was described, like a we had a, on fire. Uh, yeah, I was described by Good. somebody that we had on, on the set, some, uh, uh, it was bloody disgusting. Wrote an article oh, yeah. called "Screaming Bean," yeah. and what did he call you? Like a, a cross between like a drill sergeant and a raving lunatic. <laughs> wow. You know, uh, your character uh, name. You know, so, I mean, you out. I would really like to be. <clears throat> you know, I would really like to be. I mean, there's really no reason to be screaming and yelling all the time, and uh, um, I would really, li really like to be relaxed. Uh, but that way, <laughs> you, you have to be prepared. You have to have a real pre-production. You have to have a. We didn't even have a script. We started shooting. We started shooting. We started with the love scene between the two of us because the script still wasn't done. I was still like writing the script, you know. So go with what and you know. So, so, so there was not much dialogue in that scene. Uh -huh. So, uh, Was you know. there any? No, no. So, uh, you know. So, oh, well, I was just gonna ask, what, what did he bring out in you? Um, 
as a director, he, like as a being director, a couple, but then you know, he's I've been in a few movies with him before uh-huh. this, and um, Is that he's how you helped guys met? me. We did. We met on a movie many years ago, and then um, I've done a few movies over the years with him. And even when I did, I did this like culty movie with Shannon Doherty called Friends Till the End years ago that like plays over and over again. Hmm. I play a psycho, and he helped me from beginning to end uh, when I started working on that. And so he was always. So I basically, when we started this, said, like, we got 12 days to do this. I'm relying on you <laughs> yeah. to pull something out of me. And he did, you know. And, and um, you know, I think I'm a, a decent canvas, but I, I, I really needed him. And, mm. and he did a great, and he did that for every actor on this movie. Well, everything, I imagine, is choreographed, you know, to the nth degree. But um, as far as, like, the love scenes and the fighting scenes and doing these physical things, what do you find more of a challenge as The love scene, you're trying to, like, you're trying so hard as a woman to show your best angles. Uh, Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) So if you're going to go, you know, I was naked. I'm mm. fully naked. Mm. Everybody's going to see almost everything. And um, I think so- we have a clip of that now. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have a clip. And, you know, I was, I was ready. I was in shape for it. I was, uh-huh. you know, but I was very concerned that, you know. And so it wasn't very sexy because, you know, you were busy going, like, turn like this. And, you know, the cameraman and the lighting mm-hmm. and the this and that. So everything looks perfect. And then it looks very sexy when mm-hmm. you watch it. Mm-hmm. And so in the fight music. scenes, you don't have to look perfect. No, the fight <laughs> scenes, they just kind of went balls Yeah, out. the fight scenes actually really uh, mostly, every, definitely everything in the house was basically, there was nothing choreographed about it. We didn't have... So we didn't have any money, so we didn't have a stunt coordinator. We didn't have a, you know, we didn't have any pads. We didn't have any stunt pads. We had nothing. We just were like two guys who were like two kids, like play fighting. Okay, let's make this look as real as possible. (laughs) How did the coordinator (laughs) feel about that? Like, how did the stunt coordinator? Well, there was there was a guy there that owned that the house, and I think he'd done some some work as a coordinator before, but he didn't. uh, You know, it was my set. Um, You sure he wasn't just a homeowner? And you guys think it's a stunt <laughs> he just worked us into he believing that he was a stunt coordinator yeah, like, slash <laughs> um, location but basically manager. The, yeah. Basically, I get a lot, uh, no, we, we get a lot of no. compliments on the fight sequence in the movie because it's not a lot of choreographed at all. It's uh-huh. more pulling and yanking and trying to strangle each other and pushing each other off and like you know biting and and it's really not like a fight sequence that you, you're normally watching guys throw punches and kicks and all, all this kind of stuff. <laughs> and, and we were just like, right? we, were, well, we, were just, we were like, okay, let's go for it. And we'd go for it for like 60 seconds. And of course, afterwards, you're just like, ah, oh, tired, you yeah. know, and then do it again. And we did it three or four times. And uh, it's he's a big guy. Looking, I mean, he's yeah. a big guy. And uh, uh, it really works out like, you, it, it was messy uh-huh. is what it looks like. It's just like messy. We're rolling around. Things are falling all over the place. And, and we're pushing each other's face and like trying to hit each other. And, you know, and it's <laughs> and just he messy. he's very serious. You know? yeah. I mean, he's, you know, he, he puts, he's all in. All in. So, uh, and you're a director who suffered for your art because we saw the clip. We were talking about it before where you're probably sick of talking about. But the chokehold clip, we'll, we'll play it quickly and then yeah. you tell us about it. Uh, we have a quick, brief shot of this. Yeah, this is amazing. Let's watch it. You okay? Mm-hmm. Okay, guys, sorry. Got it? All right, this is not going to happen again. So that's really happening. This is from the making of. Well, that's what really happened happen. is that was yeah. that was at the end of the fight sequence, and uh, basically I, I said to you know Ryan, I know the LAPD chokehold, which is uh, something that uh, they used to use when D- Daryl Gates ran our police department, and uh, they used it for uh, a few years, and then they started killing people accidentally, <laughs> kind of. You so know. of course Michael instead wanted of, to use it in the movie. <laughs> sure. What else instead is of, logical? Instead of stun guns, <laughs> is really right. what they use now, or mm-hmm. the stun guns and so on and so forth. Because you have to get very close to be able to pull off a chokehold. Yeah, yeah. and so. So, but they used to, that was called the LAPD chokehold, which I had been taught, and so I know how to use it. So I figured this guy would know how to use it, you know? I figured he would know how to choke right. a guy out. So <laughs> I showed him how to put the LAPD chokehold on me. And I said, if I get into trouble, I'll just tap out, uh-huh. you know? And uh, he said, okay, all right, let's go, you know, whatever. And uh, uh, they all did what I said on that, on that yeah. show. And uh, so I just went out faster than I, I don't know what I thought I was Superman or something. I thought I didn't realize, you know, it had less to do with the air and more to do with blood to the brain, you know. And I just I went out faster than I thought I was going to go out. And by the time I tapped him, 
which you'll see, you can see, I tap yeah. him. I'm almost halfway there. I'm gone. Wow, what and my mother and I were sitting that, off to yeah. the side, and I but saw the hand thing going on, and I it's thought like, it was maybe some like brilliant it's, Michael Bean moment. It's, <laughs> and uh, it wasn't. It was he was. He was yeah, but it, you know, it's brilliant it's, actually. Yeah, it's pretty yeah, yeah. intense. And and Crazy. but you know, like then like I kind of came to. I yeah, mean, at the moment I didn't later. know what was going on, and I was like, what's going? On? Nobody's coming to my aid, and. I can't talk, and you know, did, what the, did I have a stroke? I mean, all those things were going yeah. through my head. Mm. I did, didn't realize, like, fucking ask somebody to choke me out. They actually did. And uh, so, you know, then I kind of came back, and like, I mean, so literally two or three minutes later, we were fucking back oh, yeah. at it. Because you have 10 a, days to shoot with a just a, with <laughs> just right. a fake, fake <laughs> took hold on. Okay. Not uh, the yeah. LAPD yeah, took they, they, they shifted that. And that's the, one on, that's the one that made the cut, the fake yeah. one. Oh, yeah. And that's yeah. the thing. A lot of people don't realize sometimes the real stuff isn't actually as good on screen. Right? Yeah. Well, well, we yeah, couldn't use that. To we because yeah. there's <laughs> a moment that... <laughs> you're, you're tapping. Yeah. But what about the, my other favorite part of the making was the special effects, how you did the shooting. <laughs> that, that didn't just, work. We did I know, but that's else. a great idea. Well, tell them what the idea was, because that's Well, funny. we were doing, uh, we wanted to do gunshots on a character. We wanted to do hits, yeah. you know, and, you know, basically uh, a normal movie, of course, would do squibs. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but we didn't have a... And we were in uh, Topanga, too, so uh, we, we couldn't, we didn't have enough money for uh, special effects uh, like squibs uh -huh. and so on and so forth. So... Um, I had actually uh, seen uh, people use uh, paint guns mm. on, on, on film before and watched uh, these like miniature paint guns and, and, and so we thought about that for a while but we couldn't find those. <laughs> so our running around looking. makeup artist told us uh, <laughs> that they used to, they, they, in the movie that she worked on that they had soaked peas in red blood dye mm. type of thing uh -huh. overnight and then like taking straws and <laughs> shot, shot wow, them through the straws. <laughs> and All these PAs with straws and yeah. PAs. Well, that. actually, when you see the making you of, see the it's movie, actually, it's, it actually not, looks it's great. not like PAs, oh. it's me. Oh, yeah. it's, it's and him and uh, the, camera people and our executive producer and... <laughs> yeah, and, what, and, and we're trying to... The thing of the problem was is that they were still kind of frozen and they, uh -huh. and they uh, you, you, you could clearly see on the playback, <laughs> them bouncing off, you know. Bloody so that, that didn't work. <laughs> so we kind of had to go back to the old-fashioned way, yeah. which is yeah, when looks, you see the movie, great. it's oh, the way they used to do it. No, it wasn't. Oh, oh, yes, frame, exactly. Frame. exactly. Oh, wow. yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, and That's it, cool. It, it, um, you know, I was concerned as, as, as a producer on it, uh -huh. and when I watched it, I was like, wow. Yeah. Wow. That looks great. It oh, really, it's just really the way they, yeah, they've been doing it. Before Squibs, I mean, before... The I Wild like the Bunch, points. I mean, you know, they, <laughs> I you know, they were, they were always, always done like that, <laughs> yeah. you, know? They, you know. A lot of times you see all those old movies and stuff, guys get shot and stuff, and there's nothing, no blood, yeah, no nothing. People, I mean, it's the physical All gesture. the time, yeah. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, westerns yeah. Especially, yeah all right? the westerns, like yeah, you never saw any blood. Yeah, there was never, yeah, Sam Peckinpah, I think you can think of. Oh, yeah, 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 Bloody Sam. Yeah, that's yeah, how yeah, it started yeah. all, yeah. It's true. And what about distribution? So, like, one of the harder things is obviously... To one thing that like a lot of indie films get made every year, very hard to then deliver that Not for to us. an audience. Not for us. Well, <laughs> Stacy was there the day that we were ah. announcing. Mm -hmm. You were around. Yes, I was. Um, we uh, we were excited to include you in that. And, yeah, you know. I think that's great. Yeah. yeah, let everyone know how they can see it. Oh yes. Okay. So um, there's a there's a few ways you can see it. Um, Anchor Bay mm -hmm. picked it up. We love Anchor yes, Bay. Yes, they're fantastic. So so thrilled. This is what Michael wanted, and and they. They did. We had a so few, very few companies that were interested in it, but I, I like Anchor this Bay. This is the one he wanted. Because um, um, I'd been working with him on The Divide, yeah. and mm -hmm. uh, I, you know, I met Kevin Kasha, and uh, mm -hmm. I really liked him a lot. And um, uh, I actually met uh, Andy Garcia mm -hmm. uh, and uh, had talked to him. He had a film with Anchor Bay, and he, he was very, very happy. City of Hope, with, I think. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and he was very, very happy working. He said they were yeah. really straight up. Everybody said they were like a Everyone company that you can depend on. Hmm. You know, straight they're going to rip you off. Canadian? In Canada? No. Well, we guess, well, uh, well have, Kevin Kosh is here, and there's right. an office here and in Burbank. Hmm. And then there is an office uh, in the Midwest. And then they're in Canada, and they're in UK. So we've been picked up by UK, and Canada, mm. and uh, USA for for, uh, for for with Anchor Bay, and um, we are also picked up now by uh, Germany, 
and Australia, Australia. were um, Tiberius and Transmission. Like dominoes. Yes. As they all fall. Now, and so they're in Berlin now. WTF's we'll we'll in Berlin now doing basically it. Basically, we're going to have an opening in L.A. in, uh, and, uh, in New August. York in August. It's going uh, uh, to be an you know, actual like, be theatrical release. Just in time for my birthday. Yes, we will end up here. For a week. And then a week, what's the name of the theater in New York? I think we're going to do New Bev here, theatrical opening for a week or two. And then we're we're hoping to be in the Village East in New York. Uh, we're, cool. we're not 100% positive, but we think that that's the one we're going to end you up You can at. always let us know when, because we, we do a news thing at the start of each episode. Mm -hmm. We can always update people. Okay, well, that would be great then, if you um, could do that. And uh, then Anchor Bay will roll out in uh, September with a full-on VOD, DVD, Blu-ray release. So, and this is only the beginning of the partnership. Because yes. we heard last week, uh, reported that you have a three-picture grindhouse deal. Yes, with Aspect Chiller. day shoots three in a row or yeah. something? Yeah. Tell me about it. And the farm. You, the farm. Uh, I will. This. this is. Um, this you don't have to get too technical. This is um, deal, uh, yeah. our company, but uh -huh. it's it's kind of been my um, my doing, and uh -huh. and and kind of uh, Michael is again the boss. <laughs> he, he just look. Good, I bring it to him, good, and he goes yes, no, yes, about, no, yes, no, yes, no. About doing the victim, <laughs> uh, and the, the reason why I want to do more things like the victim was that I said to the people that were making the movie that gave us the money, I said it's such a small amount of money that I don't want to look cheesy on a really bad set or mm -hmm. be, you know, really. So I have to make all the creative decisions, you know, and I decide how long it's going to be and, you know, and who's going to be in it and uh, what it's what the dialogue is going to be. And I'm going to make all the production decisions and where we shoot and how we shoot and so with what cameras and so on and so forth. And I'm going to make all the distribution decisions. And we were lucky enough to find a investor that said, okay, wow, it's all yours. Great. And uh, so that's what we... We'll we're, see if we can continue that with this three-picture right. deal. We're hoping. We, we, um, we actually have... It's rolling forward. We have some very big announcements coming, and we'll totally cool. include you in yeah, them. Thanks. But right now... Three different directors, the, is that right? Three yep. different directors, okay. um, and we'll be able to announce uh, everyone's involvement by Cannes, which is okay. March. And um, if you go to, like, the Chiller... Uh, Chiller Sales website. It's the Aspect Film website, but there's a Chiller division. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. It'll show that uh, films in production, and, and it'll it'll keep updating there. Uh, Blancbeanproductions.com. We'll, we'll we'll start updating, and you know all the horror sites will cover it. We'll we'll call oh, you yeah. guys and tell you <laughs> what's Great. up. And just and, and just so you know, I mean the victim is is not. I mean I know this is this is like a show about horror films. Mm -hmm. and the victim is not a horror movie. Mm -hmm. I don't want to. It has an lead aspect it. of horror, but it's not a horror right. movie. What is the aspect of horror? Um, do you want me to t give it away? <laughs> the ending, the ending has an aspect. Well, we of take a broad. We, I mean, me and Stacey in particular yeah. take a very a genre broad. This is more it's, a genre. it's a very yeah. genre. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Very it's a thriller, that. kind of low right, right. budget, kind of grindhousey, right. kind of. Uh, but it's not. I don't want it, that, the audience. It's to, not like Saw. Yeah, nothing yeah, okay. like that. Nothing, at all. nothing like that right, at all. Right. And there's no scares in it. There's no like, you know, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. it's a thriller. It's a thriller. You yeah. say, oh, there's a couple yeah. scares in it. But it's it's there's really some torture it's a, it's a really stuff, genre. But, you know, oh, it is a horror film. Now. Uh, <laughs> now the other one. Nothing that horrible about torture. <laughs> yeah. The oh, other right. lineup yeah. that we're being tortured, coming, right? though, <laughs> is going to be a little more borderline. It's still going to be more our style, but it's going to be a little more risque in the in the. You mean the other the first one or? Uh, the, the, the first one's the farm, or you don't know. Uh, you don't we, really we know. We think the farm will be the okay. first one, and um, we are pretty sure that okay. we have uh, Michael Eklund who's mm -hmm. going to join us, and he was in the Divide. Mm -hmm. um, I made an appearance in the Divide, but mm -hmm. Michael Eklund and Michael Bean star in the Divide, right. and that comes out on DVD April. Oh, yeah, we're, we have a clip even to show. Oh, you. We do. But we'll, we'll get to it in a few minutes. <laughs> um, so I think we have Michael Eklund, uh -huh. which we're very grateful for because he's a ridiculously uh -huh. talented actor. And we may have some other divide people. We're we're working on it right now. So will you both be in all three of them, or you have to kind of see what the stories? I are? think I'm going to be in two, uh -huh. maybe definitely in one. Michael's going to be in all three. It's going to be a I, Michael I, Bean I, anthology. Well, right. I, you know, <laughs> we, we, we've talked about it. I think I'll be in two for sure. I mean, the 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 reason why. The this reason, is news to I me. Mean, this is the first time uh, I've heard that yeah. there's only two. And on Valentine's Day, <laughs> breaking your heart. I, mean, if, if I, could, if I thought we were doing the Michael Bean anthology. If I can find somebody that has kind of a little bit of status and you can put them on the front of a cover of a DVD. Mm -hmm. and you might want to relax a little. And people yeah. recognize, it, recognize them like they do me, like... Let's say Billy Zane, or let's say uh, you know, like you know, somebody along those lines. You know, 
um, you know, I like to I like to kind of sit back, and I mean, it's like I, know I don't really. When all I say like, it. mm -hmm. it's like, oh, I'm going to be in all three. It sounds like, ah, oh, he's you know, like he's you know, he's like making movies about himself, and I, <laughs> I it's not really that. It's just the opportunity to make movies. Uh, for ourselves and it helps and, get them well, released. Well, we're also too, giving. Um, it helps there's, get them There's going to be a really cool person coming on to executive produce with me. That's that's very exciting, and I know I'm being very cryptic, and I'm mm -hmm. sorry, I have to be right okay. now. Um, but we're also giving the opportunity. Two of the projects are going to be really new, up and coming, really cool, like directors. Yeah. Ooh. And yeah, so yeah, there's yeah. an opportunity to give somebody a chance. Yeah. Yeah. Energy, that's yeah. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Well, speaking of amazing directors, I mean, you have, as you mentioned, worked with Robert Rodriguez, James Cameron, on a creative Friedkin. level. Billy Friedkin. Huh? William Friedkin. Amazing. Yeah. Yes. Michael Bay. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah. No. Sorry to interrupt. No. <laughs> no, I mean, absolutely not. Martin so Campbell. No, we can't. <laughs> okay, let's just reel them off. Here's the list. <laughs> but I'm curious to know, like, Every director has a John different Landis. style. John Landis, we had him on our show. So um, now, as a director yourself, did you find that you were drawing on anything that you learned from them, or was it more from your acting standpoint? Well, I, you know, I believe that uh, uh, basically, you know, you have to, you know, the most important thing, any director, any actor, producer, really worth their salt to tell you is what you really need is a good story. You just need a really good story, you know. And if you've got a good story, that's going to attract, uh, you know, good actors. Yeah, really nice. Cast. And that's going to attract, you know, good actors. Is going to attract other good actors and crews and so on and so forth. And so, I mean, I don't. No, do I have any style? No, my style was fucking move the camera. His style was cutting up, all up, the let's time. Go. Did let's you see that on the making? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> He's mad at me. <laughs> well, his his close ups. We need close ups for this. <laughs> his philosophy was that if I'm not flowing, cut. Right? No, that's not my philosophy. I would cut because what happens is that we would be doing a shot on her. Okay. Oh no, and I'm gonna get it now. You are gonna get it now. So, oh, no. so I'm watching like two minutes of it, like fucking not working, right? You know. And then what happens is when so you fi when you it. finally get it right, uh -huh. when you go to playback to watch it, you have to watch the first f two minutes of like to stuff that is no good, huh. which we didn't have time to do. <laughs> right. So we didn't have time to sit through all this like leading up to the good take. So it was like cut. So when I ran back to playback, I'm like, that's good, let's go, let's go, next shot. I mean, that's how we were making this movie, you know. Right. And she want, what did you want? I, um, I don't know. I think that sometimes I just thought I was in it, but it wasn't working for you, you know. And, and maybe I felt like it was working for me, and then it brought me out of it. But I think it was more like, honestly, he would cut, then I'd get frustrated, and then he'd be frustrated with me because I wasn't remembering my lines. But he would—it would actually somehow work. Hmm. Right. It would bring me to where I had to go. With the other actors too, Michael, or was it just because you're married? Uh, I was pretty much a bully. <laughs> yeah. And they were going to say those lines. I knew I was going to get were, it when I said that. They were gonna, the say question originally was, well, how did these directors influence? You're saying bully, and we're talking about Friedkin, Cameron, and Michael Bay, who are all, who are all tough. You, Not bullies, and I, and, but they're all tough. And I've said, uh, you wrap them all three together on their worst day, and you get me on the... on. <laughs> nice. now, and, and listen, He's this a is, scary dude. This is, not the, this is not the way that I yeah. would want to make a movie. You had I mean, there's no... Yeah, yeah, there's no reason to to, to, to get up, upset unless, you know, something it, that is in that square is wrong, you know? Mm -hmm. And if you don't have the prop, then give me the prop. Where's the fucking prop? You know, we can't <laughs> stay here all fucking day without the prop. Do, are we going to move in, you know? Someone I mean, going to run in with a prop? You know, and I, I never really... <laughs> somebody, can somebody, can we get a prop <laughs> on yeah, too on no, and, quickly? And, and, <laughs> and I never, I never, like, would attack anybody personally. Right. I would never say, you're a fucking asshole, yeah. man. You know, you're a fucking bad at what, you know. It was always like, you know, let's fucking, where, we don't, we're I'm sweating. Where's, we don't have the prop. <laughs> All right, we don't have the fucking prop, then we'll shoot the next scene, you know. Go get the prop, and then, you know. That but other directors you've worked with have never, you've never seen them like that with you? No, uh, no, no. Because no, Billy Freakin did have a really tough reputation. Freakin is, uh, uh, Freakin is, is uh, really, uh, uh, he, 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 yeah, Freakin's, Freakin's, he's scary. Mm -hmm. He's the only guy that I've ever worked with that, uh, 
came close to intimidating me. Mm -hmm. But uh, what, what I let him know kind of ahead. ahead of, what? What is it? What about a personality that makes you feel that way? Well, you know, Friedkin? I mean, you're, you know, I mean, basically, you're, you're there to do a job, uh -huh. and uh, if he makes you feel like you're not doing your job well, you know, and you're proud of your, you know, you're proud of your craft, you're right. proud of what you do, you know, you want to prove to him that you can do what he thinks you can do, and I think that there's something about Billy that, and he, by the way, he's a brilliant director. I mean, to me, he's he made this the the, the most. You talk about horror movies. Right. I mean, the ultimate horror movie mm -hmm. is The Exorcist. Yeah. I mean, hands down, I don't think anything comes close to touching mm -hmm. that, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. And um, he also made the best, like, cop movie um, with... Um, to Live and Die in L.A.? To, uh, no. Um, mm -hmm. um, oh, With the God. chase and the... Um, um, oh, French Connection. Yes. French yeah. Connection, yeah. you know. I mean, that is the best, like, buddy yeah. cop movie I think that's ever been made. Yeah. So he's a brilliant guy. And I think that with Billy sometimes, I think that he likes to create a tension on set, you know? And this tension on set is so palatable that it just kind of... It becomes real. It becomes real right. and flows into the film itself. Right. And I've heard that, like, on The Exorcist, that, uh, you know, that, that, that it was kind of like that, you know? Intense. It, very. Yeah. Some and of the stories from that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. And I, I think it... Like directed. Ellen Burstyn. And, uh -huh. yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, I mean, Ellen Burstyn is, like, she's, just, like, fucking brilliant, brilliant. in that right. movie. You brilliant. know? Brilliant. I'm not sure she would have been as brilliant uh, if, no, if Friedkin hadn't been there yeah. right. to well, push the, her just that, it's that much further. that ends justify the means. That's a question. Yeah. And, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Do they? Like Polanski pulling but, but, a hair but, off but, 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 but on the other hand, yes, for but on the other right, hand you right. have you know people like Clint Eastwood you know, or, or Ron Howard. You know. I right, mean, brilliant and, performances. You know, and right. not, relaxed, not performances. Mellow. I mean, as directors, mm -hmm. they're just... You know, calm as can be. But they do get a lot of good performances in their films. Oh, no, they're brilliant. Yeah. Uh, both mm -hmm. of them are brilliant directors. I mean, yeah, both of them are, are, you know, they just, they've, they make great movie after great movie after great movie after great movie, and they're calm and cool and collected, and uh, they don't, they don't do what Billy does. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, so, uh, but Billy's, Billy is in a class of his own. They're very gritty, know? and like the film you're in, for people who don't know what we're talking about, uh, as a film, I, one of the first films I saw you on mm -hmm. called Rampage, really gritty serial killer lawyer kind of drama, but it's it's not available, still not available on DVD here. I think yeah. it's on VHS. It's, it's a movie that, uh, it's got a great uh, soundtrack too. Uh, mm -hmm. Morcone did mm -hmm. the soundtrack on it, and uh, it's got Nicholas Campbell, who's uh, Canada's uh, treasure, probably best actor up there. Um, Canadian it, uh, a series called um, Da Vinci's, da Vinci's mm. Code or something. Not Code, Da Vinci's, da Vinci's something other. Da Vinci's but, Way. Or something. Uh, it, which plays it down here in the States. Um, and Friedkin, by the way, when he's not on the set, is a wonderful guy. Mm -hmm. Smart, uh, funny, fun. Um, Brilliantly, you know, uh, uh, knowledgeable about uh, history and music and, mm -hmm. and, and the theater, and, and, and he's uh, an incredible. The, and it's, all these guys are right. Ro Robert Rodriguez, Quentin Tarantino, mm -hmm. uh, James Cameron, you know. How does like, Cameron differ from Freakin then personally? Like when you're for, at. For, uh, Jim, I have, never, I have never seen Jim ever really. I did a series for him. People, people, really people cool. talk mm. about Jim as if, like, somehow he's like, this, like, like so scary or so hard no. to work mm. with or whatever. And I have never seen him do any. The worst thing that Jim I has has ever done to me personally. Mm. Now I worked with him in the early years. Okay, right. I did the I did the Terminator. Terminator. I did Aliens: of The Abyss. Basically, his first three movies. We should play those after, under while we talk. After, <laughs> after, after, great. Great. Anyway, after that, I don't know what happened. You know, uh -huh. you know, with the Titanic and all that kind of stuff. But on those three movies. You know, he never fucking yelled at anybody. He never uh, called anybody names. He never yeah. did anything, you know. He would say, he doesn't suffer fools well, but neither do I. And if you're not making the movie, then get the fuck out of the way, because we're trying to make one here, you <laughs> right. know. Yeah. And, and yeah, that's, you, you know, basically. <laughs> but Jim, I've never heard him, and we were talking about this with Lance Hendrickson and uh, uh, some guy. other people yeah. on the 25th anniversary, um, 
I've never, he, he said to me one time, this is, this is funny, he said to me after a take, that's exactly how I don't want it. Oh, you nice. know? <laughs> and I what said, do you do with that note? I, and, yeah, right? <laughs> and I said, ways. well, darn it, Jim, <laughs> yeah. then tell me what you fucking want. Yeah. All right? Give me a line reading yeah. and I'll fucking do it that way, yeah. you know? But I you love have that's to, exactly yeah. what I didn't want, yeah, you know? Yeah. Where do you go with that, right? <laughs> but what? that, I mean, if All some right. actors, you know, I, I guess they would consider that like harsh. Oh, he's such an ass, you know. But right. to well, me, he was very sensitive. He's a and passionate nervous. guy. Listen, yeah. you know, the guy's a brilliant, just a brilliant. I mean, just to be in the presence of these guys, right. Friedkin and 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 the all the movies that he's made. You know, it's not just the the few that, the two that we talked about. I mean, he's made the Sorcerer is just like a like a. Incredible. Yes, yeah, so this is a great film. Great and, film. And, and great Black film. is a more recent one with Michael, Michael Shannon. Shannon's it's amazing. Yeah. 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 Really, yeah. he's still got it as far yeah. as a horror department goes. Mm -hmm. That was. Uh, yeah. Now, I'm curious to know my actually, my favorite role of yours is in Tombstone. I've seen that <laughs> so many times. Yes, it's fantastic. And you have a lot of larger than life characters that have really withstood you know, the test of time. But are there any smaller, more uh, under the radar roles that we may not know about? that you can sort of ride. Um, well, the, you know, there are a few movies that I did, you know, throughout the years, but um, I mean, some of them are so dated now. I did one uh, television, like a four hour, two part, like miniseries called uh, Deadly Intentions. Hmm. And I played this based on the true story. I played this crazy uh, psychopath, really. Yeah. And uh, that one I was uh, quite proud proud of. I did, we, the two of us uh, did a little movie called The Ride it's it's for, Billy, it. for, for uh, Billy Graham. Yeah. It's a, it's a really? film. It's a, it's a real, Christian film. Christian film, film but it's not totally Christian based, but it is mm -hmm. supported by them. I mean, it, it was... Yeah, they a, made the movie. Yeah, it was a little movie. movie. They made it for like a million and a half. Which I used to think was a little. Now we now, we now now we think of that as a big budget. Oh, but, oh, yeah. um, <laughs> yeah. but we we did that in Arizona, and um, yeah, that, that was really cool. It was a great. A, he's, it's a great character. It's he plays. a fun little fun little character. Yeah, you can uh, you can get it sent to you. By you now, see a little bit a little bit more of oh. my, um, um, uh, you know. Uh, Michael Bean sense, of humor, yeah. sense of humor, a little bit, a little bit more. Because you played. If you want to call it charm, I'm. Yeah. Charm. <laughs> if I have any charm, if I, if I, if I, if charm. Have, if I have any charm at all, ever, you see it there. it's there in that yeah. movie. It's not coffee charming. Yeah. <laughs> since we're talking about people oh, that you're working oh, with. Um, okay, well, first of all, there is a guy from Sweden who wants me to tell you, Michael, that he loves you. Um, oh. Just thought I would I would pass that on. <laughs> also, they want to know, um, this is Grind Up Films, who wants to know um, how it was working with um, Stephen Mena on uh, Bereavement. Uh, we love Stephen Mena. Actually, um, I'm going to let Michael answer that, but I want to say, I just plug Stephen Mena for a second, because Stephen Mena's company, Crimson Films, along with PMK in New York, are doing our uh, theatrical release of The Victim. That's how much we like Stephen Mena. But I just, you know, I mean, I, I uh, you know, I did his movie, um, uh, our, it was Bereavement, right? It's Bereavement, and, yeah. And what was the first one he did? He did Malevolence, and Malevolence. then he did Bereavement. Yeah, see, I, I had, uh, I got the offer from him, and... Uh, I watched uh, Malevolent, and um, there was something about that movie that I said, you know what, this yeah. guy's got some style yeah, here. There's some, and, yeah. some real style yeah. here, I something that, about that. And, and I usually don't like, and I don't think I'll, I'll yeah. ever do another kind of, you know, I really don't like the, the violence for kind of violence mm -hmm. sake type of movies yeah. that were very successful here, like in the last like, three or four, right. yeah, you, you, like, you know what I'm talking about. All those movies, all the violence on film, I don't, I don't like. I got a little, little tiny piece in mind at the, you know, at, the, at just the right time or whatever. But the, the violence is, but he had a certain style he about that a, movie. So um, I signed on for, uh, for, for him, and uh, he was, uh, he was, he was, he was fun to work with. He was easy mm -hmm. to work with, and he was, uh, he knew what he wanted, and uh, <clears throat> he certainly didn't let me push him around. You and know, he's remained a I friend. Can, Right. Yeah, I mean, I can I can come in. I've got pretty strong opinions about stuff, and I'll say, well, you know, let's do this and let's do that and whatever. Yeah, he didn't let you. I mean, and he's a really soft-spoken guy, so th that's interesting. So yeah. what about um? And we're we're running out of time, but we can't leave without asking you about the divide and like especially <laughs> the process of working with Xavier Jens. Is that yeah? Well, Xavier, Jens, Xavier yeah. gave us the um, uh, opportunity to basically uh, we had a script. The script was pretty good, but it needed work. 
So we had a guy named Aaron. What's it? Was Aaron, Aaron Sheen? Aaron yeah, Sheen was one of the writers on the mm -hmm. film. He was there while we were shooting, and we shot that in sequence. Like thirty-five years as an actor, I've never yeah, shot anything incredible. in sequence before. Wow. So as we were shooting it, we were rewriting and improving scenes, and so the movie would kind of like move off in directions that weren't on this, on this, on the on the uh, paper, mm -hmm. which yeah, was a very a bizarre. Big, big Thing where my character really in the movie start, start, started out to be the antagonist. I mean, in the script, he is the antagonist. Mm -hmm. As it turns out in the movie, he's not. And, uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, another character who is. There's two now. It, you know, it's very. But we, I had more, we had more freedom as actors mm -hmm. uh, working on that movie than I've ever had before working mm -hmm. as an actor. And it, you would do an improv about something. If Zavi liked it, he just put it in the movie. You know, mm -hmm. Jennifer came up to visit me. Yeah. And he saw our relationship or whatever, and and put her in the movie. You know, <laughs> I mean, I mean, he just like, you know, He's he it, all he, heart. You would give all and this you would work with heart. Aaron, and you would say, well, what about this scene? What about this scene? What can we do this? You know, and if he liked it, the camera would just go there, which then tended to lead to a little bit of. Um, um, uh, Friction between the actors because scenes that <laughs> like they thought were the, the, that was theirs, all of a sudden the camera was over here right. now, you know, because somebody was improving something over here. So it's and mirroring thought, what's going on between you. So the, everybody started it's getting totally mad like at each other. Art, so art, the yeah. life. cast members oh. really didn't get along very well at all. You know, there were definitely divides in the cast, and oh. then they would shift. And you yet know, it's a, a little big family. Bit. And no, it was never a big family. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> it was. The There's divide. a group that's a big there family. Was, there was. It was nasty. Really, I mean, you talk about you talk. Everybody talks about Jim Cameron. Everybody talks about Michael uh -huh. Bay. Everybody talks about Friedkin. Well, Friedkin maybe, but <laughs> yeah, but you know, this was a nasty fucking set, man, yeah. wow. where the actors hated each other. Well, and it because it, it, on screen. it does and, indeed. And, what, and, and the reason why is that I think Xavier kind of pitted the actors against each other by like letting them do all these improvisations and writing stuff and if he liked it he would just put it in the movie and you'd mm -hmm. watch and you'd watch you'd be doing a scene you'd, you'd, I'd think it was like my big moment you know or my big scene you know and there's Michael Eklund on you know beside me or behind me you know riding on a bicycle you know picking his <laughs> nose and all of a sudden the camera's on him I'm like hey fuck this man wait That's a second crazy. so the next day I had to you know all right it's his scene what am I going to do you know and and uh, Michael and I are very good friends and uh, and I thought Michael and um um, um, um Milo Milo M yeah. Milo Terrific. I just just God, they're fucking good in the movie. And yeah. um, and um, Roseanne Arquette. Roseanne is really good. I mean, just yeah. like... I know Stacey, just, you, like, you love Roseanne. All three of them yeah. are just like... So and I thought it was like, everybody's too. good. In I it. thought you had the same kind of intensity you had as coffee. I felt like it, it, it reminded me of that. Do you that. think he's like coffee in person? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> no, no, no. But we're getting we're Don't getting the, we're there. getting our rap <laughs> signal, so the camera's going to start panning okay, off okay. us <laughs> to the crew, oh, really? and that's going to be. And they'll so, be riding a bicycle. But people can watch uh, the divide comes out April April seventeenth. Uh, April seventeenth. So, yep. and it's a grueling movie. It's a movie you will survive. Yes. You have to see it though. <laughs> and it needs uh, to be yeah. seen. St. Patrick's Day. You'll be turning green with kind of uh, so waiting for a greenish thing. Uh, so thanks for spending it's Valentine's Day with us. Yeah. yeah. And um, let us know how the next three go. Come on, we definitely want to. Oh, we're gonna get, we're gonna have some information for you. Cool. Thank you. Uh, thanks for letting us run a minute over and uh, join us next week. Sorry. And thanks for tuning in. Happy Valentine's Day. Peace.